Good day and welcome to another video segment on how I set up a quest in the Foundry. This will be the foundation to all subsequent videos that will build upon this video and its plot. The quest title, A Diamond in the Rough. The plot for this beginner tutorial series will be a simple one in which you are tasked with speaking to Johnny the Street Urchin. He explains to you that he wants you to go into the city sewers and get a special fancy ring that belonged to his grandfather and his grandfather before him. It was taken by thieves in the dead of night. With nothing better to do at this moment, you decide to assist Johnny the street urchin. Now that I have my plot, I like to place in my private notes a rough outline of the quest and any specifics that I may think of. For this particular case, um, there will be these steps. You'll talk to the street urchin in the protector's enclave enter the sewers, fight any encounters that you may meet, unlock the door to the boss and the exit, fight the sewer boss, pick up the fancy jewelry that fell off the boss, return the jewelry to the street urchin and the quest is complete. I will move on to the story tab now. For this quest I need to pick my starting map which in this case will be the protector's enclave as the starting map. It is due to the street urchin that I want to use in my quest. He is also located in the protector's enclave map. You could very well choose any other pre-made cryptic map or use a custom map that you had previously created. The story tab is where the flow of your quest is maintained. By clicking on the map tab here on the left you can choose to play from this point in your quest or choose to delete the map and everything on it. A point to note here is that you cannot change anything on this map. This is due to all the cryptic maps being pre-rendered or baked to provide a faster loading time for your users. For this particular map you must place the objectives for what you would like to happen in sequential order. In later videos we will talk about each of these objectives and how they can be applied. The first objective for us in this quest is the dialogue between the player and the street urchin. So let's do that now. Left click on the dialogue objective and drag it over to your storyline. By clicking on this objective a dialogue opens with a bunch of options. You will see some warning symbols, the little yellow traffic signs with an exclamation point on it. These symbols represent required information to make this dialogue viable. In the first input we need to enter the text for the quest step. This text tells the player in point form what they need to do next. Waypoints is how we show the player where to go if they have the pixie dust trail on. We can make it available here or turn it off. We'll leave it on. NPC. This is where we choose who and where the conversation will take place. Let's select the protector's enclave and the first young street urchin in the list. Click OK. Contact. This is where we set up the conversation between the urchin and the player. Under animation, there are many unique and specific animations that will fit most of your needs. These animations can either heighten or detract from your dialogue. I try to pick an animation that reflects the mood or feeling of the current conversation. Click OK. Next is the actual text for the conversation. Everything from mission text, out of character text, to the speech text itself. Click mission text and enter between the brackets, talking to Johnny the street urchin. This will be displayed at the top of the dialogue in yellow. Next click the out of character button and between those brackets enter Johnny the street urchin fidgets nervously as he speaks. This text will be shown underneath the yellow text in blue to signify that it's spoken out of character. Now we will enter the words spoken by the street urchin to the player. We will enter, could you help me friend?
click the X to close. I save regularly and often. If there is one piece of advice that I would give, it would be just that. You will spend a lot of time in here creating and the last thing that you would want is to lose everything that you have done since the last save point because you didn't save your current progress that you have done up to this point. Let us complete the dialogue between the urchin and the player. By clicking on the advanced dialog button it takes us directly to the dialog trees tab. By clicking the play dialog button below the tab in the top right of the screen you can view the dialog that we have created thus far as if we were playing the game. Let's exit out of here and return to the Foundry toolset and complete the dialog. We have already entered the initial conversation from the urchin to the player. Now we need to enter the player's response to the urchin's question. Under the heading response number one, we'll enter the player's response, what seems to be the problem? You can change the color of the player's response choice to either white for normal text, yellow for quest text, or orange for the quest choice. Required item is for use when the player is required to have a specific item to continue along that dialog chain. The item would have to be created first under the items tab. It will then be displayed here to be selected. You can also use the required item to be a skill check against the player's skills to move forward along this dialog chain. The next option that is available to us is Enable Win and Disable Win. These two drop-down boxes are to be used when conditional states are required for the dialog to be made available to the player. There are four settings, Never, Immediately, Objective Complete, and Objective in Progress. Default settings are Immediate and Never, respectively, meaning always available and will never disappear when we are finished with it. This is fine for most straightforward dialogues. Next we need the response from the urchin in relation to our question that we had posed to him. Select an applicable animation. Click OK. His response is, I need someone to retrieve a family heirloom that was stolen from me. Let's give the player two options in response to the urchin's plea. The first response will be, who stole it from you? To add a second response choice, click on the add response button at the bottom. Notice how the screen changed and the second dialog was added to the right of the player's first response. In the second response, add, you do not look like you would have such an item that belonged to you. Here you can see the player's two choices of dialog responses side by side. Let us continue by adding their urchin's responses to our player's choices. Add another dialog prompt by clicking on the X. Notice the warning sign. Select an applicable animation. For the prompt text, enter the urchin's response. Add the player's response. Rinse and repeat for this side. Select an applicable animation. For the prompt text, enter the urchin's response. Add the player's response. Well, we're getting near the end of this conversation between Johnny the Street Urchin and the player. If you look at the bottom of the dialogue chains, you will see dialogue end and a checkbox for fail story objective. This states that if the checkbox is not checked, the current dialog chain will be complete and the quest's next step in the storyboard will become active. And if the checkbox is checked and the player reaches this point in the dialog chain, the quest does not progress any further. In other words, it fails and the player must start at the beginning of the complete dialog chain again. As you can see, I have started to add a third choice for the player for which we will set to fail. This allows the players to drop out of the conversation by choice.
close the prompt dialog. And place a check mark in the box for fail story objective. As you can surmise from what I have shown you here today, that you can be as simple as we have done here to a quite complex conversation that has a big story or a fair amount of lore. That's it for this video. I tried to keep it around the 10 minute mark and we have done fairly well. In the next video, we will place a cryptic map, add how we get there and inside our sewer, maybe even get to adding some encounters as well. That's it for now. See you in our next video tutorial.